today's topic is local anesthetics so what is local anesthesia and what are the drugs which are used in promoting local anesthesia local anesthesia is nothing but it is the loss of sensation of a localized area causing depression of the excitation of nerve endings so here what are we doing is like we are losing we are making the person to become unconscious or in the localized area itself not the whole body or he don't become unconsciousness so here the localized part becomes numb it loses its sensation so this is called as local anesthesia this local anesthesia can be induced by various methods so a few of the methods are like low temperature so if we give the at the particular area if we give the low temperature or if we give chilled environment it becomes numbness the local area becomes numb and it loses its sensation and the other method is mechanical trauma so by giving the external uh, mechanical uh, injury or as me mechanical uh, if we give that some sort of mechanical strength then it gives it gives the numbness to the particular area and the other one is anoxia anoxia is a condition where we decrease the oxygen supply so if in the localized area if the oxygen supply is decreased then that particular area will lose the sensation and the other one is neurolytic agents like alcohol and phenol so if we uh, give or else if we apply alcohol or phenol at the particular area then that area will lose the sensation and finally the chemical agents which are called as local anesthetic so there are these are the drugs which are induced either orally or uh, either sorry uh, they are injected either topically or they are given through IV route in order to induce local anesthesia. Local anesthetic. So these are the drugs which induce loss of sensation by reversible. In the sense, this loss of sensation is reversible. So we are inducing the loss of sensation, and again, the person can gain the sensation after few uh, after a few moment. And these are used only in the localized area. The whole body is not losing its sensation. Only particular area or uh, is uh, lost the sensation, and the person become and the person's consciousness is not affected and the other one is when applied it to the when applied directly to the nerve tissues or mucous membrane so here the local anesthesia is uh, we can induce local anesthesia only when the injection or the local anesthetics are given to nervous nerve tissues or else mucous membranes for in order for a local anesthesia to uh, exhibit its actions it has to have some properties so it is a simple word remember the word instead so the properties of the local anesthesia are given in this word itself so i stands for it should not be irritating to the tissue so if we apply or if we give through injection it should not cause any irritation or damage to the tissue the other one is n means it should not cause any permanent alteration of nerves so if we are uh, subjecting or if we are injecting the local anesthesia to the nerves it should not cause any nerve damage or it should not alter any nerve functioning and the other one is s it is systemic it should it's uh, i mean it shows systemic toxicity should be low so if we are applying at the particular area it should not cause any toxicity or it should not cause any sort of rashes or it should not cause any sort of hypersensitivity reactions where it is injected or applied and then when is t the time onset of time or is the time of onset of its action should be fast so once we inject or once we administer the local anesthesia it should show if show its effect the delayed onset of action should not be the characteristic property of the local anesthesia the other one is effective so it should be effective once we apply if it's not effective then the, it's no it's of no use to give local anesthetics the other one is duration of action should be long so for example so if a person uh, has to go some uh, minor surgery which is not needed to give general anesthesia so we are just applying the local anesthesia to a particular area and we have to give uh, we have to do some minor surgery in that so the duration of or else the duration of local anesthesia should be sufficient in order to uh, i mean in, during the surgery so if the local anesthesia is having short duration of action and before completing the surgery itself the uh, localized area gains the sensation then the person may feel pain so it should have enough duration of action in order to finish the procedure 
Now let us compare the general anesthesia with the local anesthesia. How they are getting differentiated. So here, we, if we see the site of action of general anesthesia, it is affecting CNS. And if we see the local anesthesia, it is affecting peripheral nerves. And area of body involved. So if you give general anesthesia, whole body loses, loses its consciousness. And in local anesthesia, it is only restricted to the particular area. That is to the localized area itself and affecting the consciousness of the person and consciousness is lost in general anesthesia whereas in local anesthesia it may be an altered and uh, the vital functions vital functions i mean the care of the vital functions so whatever the vital organs are there we have to take care of that organs in order to exhibit the proper function so in the general anesthesia we have to take essential care for that but in local anesthesia it's not that uh, useful or it's not, i mean it's not that necessary to take care of the vital organs and physical trespass or physiological trespass so physiological trespass for general anesthesia is high and for local anesthesia is low and the health a uh, patient's health so uh, regarding the patient's health if we are giving general anesthesia we have to take care of the proper uh, i mean we have to take proper care and we have to see the medical history of the person if the person is not healthy then it's not that safe to give general anesthesia but if the person is not that healthy also it is preferred to give local anesthesia so in this condition uh, it is slight risky to give general anesthesia anesthesia and uh, use in non-cooperative patients so here uh, if a person is not cooperating uh, in order to inject or uh, administer anesthesia then general anesthesia it's not possible if the patient won't cooperate but if in a local anesthesia it is I mean uh, sorry in general anesthesia it is possible for a, if a person even won't cooperate the, uh, I mean, uh, it's preferable to give general anesthesia, but in local anesthesia, if a patient is not cooperating, it's not that easy to give local anesthesia. And uh, major for major surgeries, general anesthesia is preferred, whereas local anesthesia cannot be used. And for minor surgery, general anesthesia is not preferred, whereas local anesthesia can be preferred. Now, let us see the classification of local anesthetics. So, local anesthetics are categorized into two categories. One is injectable and the other one is surface agents. So, injectables are further classified into three categories. One is low potency and short duration, intermediate potency and intermediate duration as well as high potency and high duration. Whereas, injectables are further classified into soluble anesthetics and insoluble anesthetics. So here, uh, if we see the classification of injectable anesthetics, these are like low potency and uh, low duration of action. The drugs which come under this category are procaine and chlorprocaine. And the drugs with intermediate potency and intermediate duration of action are lidocaine and prilocaine. Whereas the drugs which include or else the drugs with high potency and high duration of action are tetracaine, bupivacaine, ropivacaine and dibucaine. Let us see the classification of surface anesthetics. So these are classified into soluble and insoluble. So the drugs which come under the category of soluble are cocaine, lidocaine which is also called as lignocaine, tetracaine and benoxinate. So these are the drugs which are soluble in water. And the other one is insoluble drugs are benzocaine, uh, butylaminobenzoate and oxytazine. So oxytazine, oxytazine. So these are the drugs which are insoluble. Well, let us see the chemistry of the local anesthetics. So how how uh, structurally these local anesthetics are. So these local anesthetics are having amphiphilic property. So amphiphilic in the sense in their structure they are having both hydrophilic and hydrophobic uh, hydrophobic elements. So what is hydrophobic? Hydrophobic are those which are water hating. They are not they are not having affinity towards water. Whereas hydrophilic are the substances or components which are water loving. They attract water easily. So in the local anesthetics we have both elements. We have hydrophilic as well as hydrophobic elements that is the reason they are called as amphiphilic or else uh, they are having amphiphilic property and these local anesthetics both these hydrophobic as well as hydrophilic components of the local anesthesia are uh, are linked by either ester or amide linkage so here these are the structures of procaine and uh, lidocaine 
So, if we see here, they are, uh, these uh, local anesthetics have weak bases. So, they, they are like weak bases. They are, in the sense, they are, more, uh, they are having more acidic property. So, here the aromatic ring portion, whatever is there, it is the hydrophobic part. Whereas, the amine portion, it is hydrophilic part. And this hydrophobic and hydrophilic part are linked together by the intermediate chain, which, is, which may be either ester or which may be either amide. So, what, what will be the, I mean, what is the characteristic property of the aromatic ring? That is hydrophobic element. So, this hydrophobic element is, uh, the name itself indicates hydrophobic in the sense it is also called as lipophilic. It, it is very affinity towards the lipids. And this lipid solubility is responsible in order for the drug to penetrate to the plasma membrane. So, here, if the, uh, if the drug is having lipid solubility, it easily passes through the plasma membrane and thereby it is having more more potency and it is more effective so here in the same way it is more soluble and once it is soluble it easily gets diffused into the plasma membrane and that way that is the reason it is more potent so if we take the example so bupivacaine is lipid more lipophilic when compared to the lidocaine so that is the reason bupivacaine is more effective than lidocaine drug if we see the interlinkage or intermediate linkage, so if if, if a local anesthetic which is having ester linkage, what is what are the characteristic features or properties it have? And if it is having amide linkage, what are the properties? So if a drug is having a amide linkage or amide group, then it is more intense, so it is more potent, and it is not easily breakable. So the amide linkage, whatever is there, it is not that easily breakable, and that is the reason these local anesthetics are stable towards the metabolism and these are long lasting drugs and they are not hydrolyzed by the plasma esterases so there are many many plasma esterases enzymes which are present in the blood and they uh, break down the amide as well as whatever the linkages are there so here these amide if amide linkage is there they are susceptible to these i mean they are not susceptible to these plasma esterases and thereby the amide amide linkage is not that easily breakable and uh, they are heat stable so if there is uh, any uh, in the sense if, the, if even the temperature inside the body increases that won't affect these structures and that is the reason these uh, amide uh, containing local anesthetics can be autoclaved so if they are autoclaved they are getting sterilized and uh, they they have if they are administered also the hypersensitivity reactions are very rare with these kind of drugs and they infiltration the infiltration and block so they are not filtered that easily and thereby they are getting blocked and the examples which come under this category are lidocaine prilocaine and bupivacaine so here we can see the amide linkage so where the uh, double bond oxygen is attached to the NH group and the ester group. So these ester groups are having less intensive, they are less potent than the amide, amide uh, containing uh, local anesthetics and they are easily breakable and that is the reason they are not stable and they are having short duration of action and they can be easily hydrolyzed by the plasma esters and they are not stable with heat. So that is the reason they, are ca they can't be autoclaved. Some other sterilization procedures have to be followed in order to sterilize these ester containing local anesthetics and they are having high risk of hypersensitivity reactions. So we have to take care when while we are administering in order to prevent these hypersensitivity reactions. And these are apply applied topically. And the examples which come under this category are procaine, cocaine and benzocaine. So here we can see the ester linkage where it is containing COO group that is C double bond O which is attached with the oxygen group so this these are esters so amides uh, esters are having quite opposite characteristic features to that of the amide so that is the reason amides are more effective when compared to the ester carrying uh, local anesthetics so the terminal hydrophilic nature so the term what what is the uh, uh, what function or what is the uh, function uh, properties of these hydrophilic uh, containing or is the hydrophilic component which is present in the local anesthetics 
so these are first thing they are hydrophilic in nature and they are containing secondary or tertiary amines so if we see hydrophobic structure or hydrophobic element it is an aromatic ring structure but here this is secondary or this it is containing tertiary or secondary amines in its structure and it is responsible for the PKA of the local anesthesia so PKA is nothing but the capacity of the uh, of the component in order to get dissociated in the presence of acid so this is called as uh, the PKA coefficient or dissociation coefficient and uh, if these are responsible for the PKA characteristic of the local anesthetic. So if this, uh, I mean, if uh, the PKA is high, then they are more prone to dissociation. So here, if the, if there is, I mean, if the drug is having or local anesthesia is having less PKA value, that is closer to, I mean, if the pH is around 7.4. If the pH is alkaline pH, then they are having less pKa values. And here, that is if they have if they are having less pKa value and they are more potent or they are having greater action. If they are having greater pKa value, then they are less potent. So now let us see the classification according to this uh, according to the chemistry. So we saw ester linkages and amide linkages. So the local anesthesia which are containing ester linkages are cocaine, procaine, chlorprocaine, tetracaine and benzocaine. Whereas the local anesthesia which are containing amide linkages are lidocaine, bupivacaine, dibucaine, crilocaine and ropivacaine. Cocaine. Cocaine is the first local anesthesia which is discovered and it is a naturally occurring plant alkaloid from the plant called as erythroxylon coca. So this is one of the prototype drug from which the lignocaine is synthetically prepared. So cocaine is the first local anesthesia and from where from which the lignocaine is synthetically uh, prepared in order to show its local anesthetic action. Now let us see the mechanism of action of these local anesthetics. So here these local anesthesia at the terminals or at the nerve endings what they do they are getting uh, th these local anesthesia are injected in the form of salts. So here once we inject these local anesthesia in the form of salts uh, at, the, at the nerve endings or at the nerve membranes they get dissociated because of the PKA I mean the, because of the amine hydrophilic group which is responsible for the dissociation of these local anesthetics they get dissociated into the uh, component that is which is containing aromatic ring and it is dissociated into the protons so this one which is I mean the neutral one which is there it uh, it then only it crosses the blood brain uh, sorry then only it crosses the neuronal membrane so if it is in the form of salt it's not possible for it to cross through the neuronal membrane because ions cannot cross through the plasma membrane or neuronal membrane. So that is the reason it is getting dissociated and thereby it can enter into the neuronal membrane. And here we can see the pictorial representation where uh, the, uh, I mean the BH, uh, B in the sense the local anesthesia here. So it is getting dissociated into the local anesthetic form that is neuronal neural form and the other one is the proton so here the uh, the one which is which are in the form of salts they block the entry of the sodium into the plasma membrane or into the membrane whereby they are preventing the depolarization of the cell so if the cell is not depolarized then it becomes i mean it it will not induce a pain and thereby they can show the local anesthetic effect here if we see how they are blocking, how these local anesthetics are acting on the sodium ionic channels, here once the local anesthetics are injected, they block the sodium channels. So they won't allow the sodium to allow into the to, to allow or they won't allow the uh, entry of the sodium into the plasma membrane. If the sodium enters, it, uh, it will undergo depolarization and thereby because of the depolarization, the action potential is generated in the plasma membrane. So if action potential is generated, it sends some impulses to the brain in order to induce pain. So here if the entry of sodium is blocked, this local anesthetics will block the entry of sodium and thereby they are not allowing the depolarization of the cell and ultimate result is the pain is not induced.
and here we can see the pictorial representation here the sodium channels are present in three states one is resting state activated state and inactivated state so here in the uh, sodium channels we are having the local anesthesia receptor so these local anesthesia they go and bind to the local anesthetic receptors which are present in the sodium channels so if it is in the resting state so uh, here the sodium channel is not blocked but it won't allow the entry of the sodium into the uh, into the plasma membrane if it is in the resting state but if it is in the active state the sodium channels are opened and the sodium entry is allowed into the cell in order to promote depolarization but here if it is in the inactive state the uh, i mean uh, the entry can be allowed i mean in the sense the entry through the ionic channels can be allowed but the ionic channel is blocked once it is blocked it is not allowing the sodium to enter completely into the plasma membrane and it won't even allow the sodium uh, sodium ions which are present inside the membrane to move out of the plasma membrane so these are the states so only the entry can be allowed if it is in the activated state but the exit can be but the exit is not possible if the so if the sodium channel is in the inactivated state so these local anesthetics they bind to the local anesthetic receptor and they won't allow the sodium to enter into the uh, into the plasma membrane now we'll see how the order of blockade is taking place. So here, first when we inject the local anesthesia, the autonomic nervous system or the autonomic region is getting uh, imparalyzed. Sorry, they are getting paralyzed and thereby the once the autonomic nervous system is blocked, it won't induce pain and if it won't induce pain, the temperature is lost and once the temperature is lost, the person loses the sensation. And if the sensation is lost and if the sensation persists for longer period of time, then it undergoes, uh, then uh, the pressure inside the body increases and thereby the motor nerve is impaired. But here, once the, uh, I mean, once we, the local anesthesia is getting eliminated out of the body and once a person gains the sensation, the recovery of the sensation is in the reverse order. First, here, the motor nerves are getting relieved from their numbness and next, the, the pressure inside decreases whereby the person can feel touch or the person can feel sensation and the temperature becomes to the normal state and thereby the person can feel pain whereby the autonomous nervous functioning is proper so in this way the order of blockade i mean the order of recovery is quite reversed to the order of blockade let us see the actions of local anesthetics. So how these local anesthetics are acting at the various parts of the body. So here once we administer local anesthetics on the CNS, especially cocaine. Cocaine is such a drug which is, which is a CNS stimulant. So once it is administered, it causes excitation of the central nervous system. So if we take example, the people take tea or tea where it is containing uh, cocaine so caffeine caffeine or cocaine so the, it causes the excitation excitation of the or else it once they have tea the, their mind uh, works faster or their mind becomes sharp so this is because of the caffeine which is present so in the same way cocaine is also a CNS stimulant where it causes the proper functioning of the central nervous system and procaine is a local anesthetic a local anesthetic which is less potent when compared to other local anesthetics and lidocaine first once if the if we uh, administer lidocaine to a person first initially it causes little drowsiness and thereby it may cause allergic reactions uh, and the other one is at higher doses it produces excitation followed by depression so if we give the lidocaine in the normal proportion then it causes drowsiness and it may cause lethargy and if it is uh, becoming if, it, if we give it in higher doses then it may cause excitation which is quite opposite we can say which is quite antagonistic effect than its normal effect here we can see the uh, how they are acting on the CNS. First, it causes euphoria condition where the person feels pleasure in having that local anesthesia, and then it causes excitement of the central nervous system, and then uh, the person mental confusion. The mental state of the person is uh, impaired, and the other one is because of the mental confusion it may cause restlessness and if the person is undergoing restlessness there occurs distress and thereby there are chances of getting tremors 
and once the tremors are there it causes twitching of the muscle and finally it leads to the convulsions. So if a person is having convulsions the person becomes unconsciousness and it leads to respiratory depression finally leading to the death of the person. So if the local anesthetic activity stays for longer period of time then it shows all these effects on the central nervous system. How they are acting on the cardiovascular system? So, if, what are the effects of these local anesthetics on cardiovascular system? Firstly, they cause this cardiac depression. So, as the uh, nerve impulses are impaired or the impulses which are generated uh, at the nerve uh, endings are impaired, then it causes cardiac depression. So, if cardiac depression is caused, then it may lead to fall in blood pressure. So, bl the blood pressure will be lowered and the drugs like bupivacaine, it causes vasodilatation. It causes dilatation of the blood vessels, whereas cocaine-like drugs, it causes vasoconstriction. <clears throat> it will cause constriction of the blood vessels. Let us see the pharmacokinetics. So, what happens to a local anesthetic drug once it is entering into the body? So, here the absorption of the local anesthesia is based on various parameters like dosage, site of injection, lipid solubility and vascularity. So, if we are giving it is dose dependent. So, based on the dose, the absorption of the local anesthesia is depending. So, if the dose is lower, it gets absorbed easily and if the dose is higher, it is getting, getting absorbed little delayed. And site of injection. So, how, uh, where we are applying that also depends because in our body, the organs, a few organs are having greater vasculature and few organs are having lesser vasculature. For example, if we give through injection form, it directly enters into the blood circulation and thereby the absorption of the drug is almost to up to 100%. But uh, in the same way, if we are applying topically, it takes some time in order for the drug to reach the systemic circulation. So and uh, lipid solubility. So if you are in the sense how much lipid solubility the drug is having. If the drug is highly lipidic in nature it is getting more absorbed and if the drug is less lipidic in nature then it is absorbed a little less and vasculature so here if the uh, place where or the local area where the local anesthesia is applied then the site of action or the localized area if it is highly vasculature if it is containing high vascular blood vessels then it is getting absorbed more and if it is having less vasculature it is getting absorbed lower so here these local anesthesia should be uh, if they are given in combination with the vasoconstrictors so it may cause quite opposite effect or as we can say they are nullifying the effect of vasoconstrictor so except to cocaine most of the local anesthesia have vasodilatation in their nature so here if we give the cocaine with the vasoconstrictors it may show synergistic effect but if we combine the local anesthetics with the vasoconstrictors then it may show the reverse effect in the sense they may uh, they won't allow the vasoconstrictors to, to show their vasoconstrictive effect and the distribution so this local anesthetics uh, local anesthetics even the distribution is also based on the site of injection so if we are injecting directly into the systemic circulation the local Local anesthesia, if it is hydrophilic in nature, it is easily solubilized in the systemic circulation and it is evenly distributed. So, if it is not hydro hydrophilic in nature, then the distribution of the local anesthesia is low when compared to hydrophilic local anesthetics and biotransformation. So, once the local anesthesia are uh, distributed, they undergo metabolism. So, biotransformation is one of the metabolic reaction which is occurring in the body. So, these local anesthesia are are metabolized with the biotransformation reaction and these metabolites are excreted out through urine. Well, let us see a few uh, I mean let us compare the characteristics of few local anesthetics. So here the procaine is having a slow onset of action and the pKa value of the local anesthesia is 8.9. Uh, pKa value of the procaine is 8.9. So if a drug is having less pKa that is dissociation constant value it is more potent. So here the duration of action of procaine is very less 
short and the vasodilatation effect is more so protein causes vasodilatation and plasma protein binding is up to 5% so if the plasma binding uh, capacity is uh, lower then it can uh, show I mean it is having longer duration of action in the sense it is available in the systemic circulation for longer period of time therefore that it can show its effect and if we observe a lidocaine it is having a rapid onset of action and the pka value is 7.9 and the local duration the duration of action of this local anesthesia is moderate and it is also a greater vasodilatation effect and the protein plasma protein binding is up to 55 percent so here the lidocaine is once we administer lidocaine 55 percent of the lidocaine is getting binded to the plasma proteins and thereby it is not showing its effect only 45 percent of the drug is able to show its effect so whatever the leftover drug which is not un, uh, which is not binded or unbound that is showing the effective uh, local anesthetic action and the drug tetra again it is also having slow onset of action and the pka value of this drug is about 8.5 and it is also having longer duration of action so when compared to progen and lidocaine this is having a lower vasodilatory effect and plasma protein binding capacity is up to 75 percent and the drug bupivacain it is also having slow onset of action and the pka value is 8.1 with a longer duration of action and less vasodilatory effect when compared to other drugs and the plasma binding capacity of this bupivacaine is around 90% so only 10% of the drug is effective so when compared to all these four drugs lidocaine is having more effect or more rapid onset of action and more potent when compared to other drugs but here if we see chemically or structurally bupivacaine is more effective than lidocaine let us see the adverse effects of these uh, local anesthetics. So first, if they cause CNS depression in the sense, first they cause CNS depression, uh, first they cause excitation of the CNS and then followed by the depression and it causes local neurotoxicity. So if, if it is applied to the renal area, then it may, uh, sorry, if we, if we apply to the localized area, it may cause toxic to the neurons which are present or to the nerves which are present in the localized area and in the CNS, Especially the bupivacaine drug, it is more cardiotoxic when compared to other local anesthetics and it may cause improper functioning of the autonomic nervous system and it may cause motor paralysis, it may paralyze the motor, motor neurons and thereby uh, impairing the motor function and hematological effects so it may cause the hemolysis of the rbc and thereby leading to the rbc death and it may cause hypersensitivity reactions so if we use the local anesthesia for chronic period of time it may show all these adverse effects so let us see the individual drugs so cocaine cocaine is a drug which is used as a surface or a topical anesthesia so this is applied surface but it is not given through uh, uh, i mean it is not administered either through oral or iv and we should not give a cocaine with epinephrine because if we give cocaine is a potent vasoconstrictor so epinephrine is also a vasoconstrictor so if we combine these two drugs it may show synergistic effect and it is toxic on heart and it may induce the cardio toxicity so we should not i mean uh, we should not administer this cocaine directly to the heart or else we should i mean we have to make sure that the dose of the cocaine is in such a way that it is it is not causing any cardiotoxic effects and it may cause pyrexia with the overdose of uh, cocaine so pyrexia it will uh, i mean it may increase fever or it may increase temperature in the body so on overdosage of cocaine it may cause fever to the person <coughs> So here we can see the side effects of cocaine in the brain. It may reduce attention and it may cause insomnia that is sleeplessness or it may even induce hypersomnia also where the person sleeps over or else we can say the person will always feel sleepy and it may cause lethargy that is tiredness and it may have sore throat <coughs> and chest pain, asthma, bronchospasm, fever, rhinorrhea that is running nose and uh, this uh, increased uh, risk of infarction the heart tissue in because of the cardiotoxic effect it may show i mean uh, the it may cause myocardial infarction on uh, delayed uh, i mean or on chronic use of this cocaine and it may cause pruritus this is one of the uh, allergic reactions to the skin so these are a few of the side effects of the cocaine the other drug is benzocaine 
So benzocaine is available, I mean available in the preparations in the sense it is uh, it is also a surface or topical agent where it is ab uh, available in the form of sprays. So here it is sprayed in order to relieve the pain and it, it even won't cause any irritation also. And this is a surface anesthesia. So we are just applying on the surface of the skin or it is applied topically through the spray or even through ointments also. And it is used to produce uh, anesthesia of the mucous membrane. So if we have to produce or if we have to cause numbness to the mucosal membrane, then this uh, benzocaine is more preferable and it induces a methemoglobinemia. So if we use benzocaine for longer period of time, it may cause methemoglobinemia. So this methemoglobinemia is a condition where the methemoglobin is produced, where the ferric form of uh, methemoglobin is a compound, where in the hemoglobin structure we contain ferric ion, that is Fe2+. So this ferric ion is converted to Fe3+, where a methyl group is attached to the heme group and it forms methemoglobin, thereby it is uh, decreasing the oxygen carrying capacity of the hemoglobin or RBC. The other drug is lidocaine or lignocaine. This is most widely used a local anesthetic agent and it is most comfortable to give uh, this lidocaine also. And it is effective in all routes. Either we give through topical route or injectable route, it is effective. And it is it is having faster onset of action. We have seen the characteristic properties of lidocaine. It is having faster onset of action and it is having uh, even a duration of action also for longer period of time. And it is better or as we can say, it is more potent than procaine. And see if a uh, if, uh, person or if the ester containing uh, if the ester containing local anesthetics are having any, any allergic reactions so to these persons or to such such kind of persons this lidocaine is more preferable as it is containing amide amide linkage in its structure and it is more potent than procaine but it is equally toxic to the potent also how effective it is and how, at the same time it is that toxic also and it is having sedentary effects when compared to others the other drug is bupivacin. So bupivacin can be administered through injectable because it is not that effective when we administer it topically. So that is the reason it is preferable to give through the root of IV. And it is having slower onset of action but it is having longer duration of action. But it is having a unique characteristic feature when compared to other local anesthetics is that it causes sensory and motor dissociation. So it will cause the sensory and motor dissociation whereby it is I mean it is minimizing the analgesia and thereby it blocks the analgesic or else we can say it is not causing or else it is blocking the analgesia action of the CNS and it is cardiotoxic when compared to other local anesthetics. The other drug is ropivacin. So ropivacin is an enantiomer of bupivacin. So enantiomers are the chemical structures which are mirror images. For example, if we see the structure of bupivacin and if we see the structure of bupivacin in the mirror, how it looks, that is ropivacin. So it is the mirror image of bupivacin. And enantiomers are nothing but mirror images. And this is also not topically effective. So as bupivacin is not that effective topically, so this is also not effective. And this is preferably given through IV root and it is clinically equivalent to bupivacin because it, it is uh, as it is the enantiomer, it is having the equal action to that of the bupivacin. So it is also more uh, it is also potent as that of bupivacin. And it is also having the sim I mean, similar characteristic feature of the sensory and motor dissociation of the CNS. Now let us see the clinical uses of these local anesthetics. So here the uh, drugs like tetracaine, lignocaine, cocaine and benzocaine they are used in the surface anesthesia and in the infiltration anesthesia and field block anesthesia the drugs like lignocaine, procaine and bupivacin are preferred and for the nerve block anesthesia the drugs like procaine, lignocaine, bupivacin, tetracaine and ropivacin are preferred. For spinal anesthesia lignocaine, tetracaine and bupivacin are given and for epidural anesthesia the lignocaine and bupivacin are the drug of choice and for the drugs I mean for the anesthesia used in ophthalmology the drug like prop uh, proparacaine is used.
So here, if we compare the site of action where these local anesthetics are acting and uses of these local uses of surface anesthesia. So here, at the site of I, the drug like the drugs which are used are tetracaine in the dose of one to two percent and benzo benoxinate at zero point four percent. And these drugs are formulated in the form of ointments or drops. So in the eye, in order we have in order to cause anesthesia at the eye, we have to give either drops or ointment. And the purpose is that in order to uh, in order to do tonometry, it is a surgical procedure. So in order to induce that surgical procedure, this uh, these ointments or drops are preferred. And for nose and ear, the drugs like lidocaine at the dose of two to four percent and tetracaine at the dose of one to two percent which are formulated in the form of drops and they are used to relieve the painful lesions so if there are any painful lesions in order to relieve that in, in order to relieve the pain these drugs are preferred and for mouth and throat the drug benzocaine is preferred in the form of lozenges so lozenges are the formulated preparations which causes soothing of the throat so these are the uh, formulations once administered they cause soothing of the throat and uh, they they are used for the purpose of if there is if a person is having stomatitis or sore throat so these this formulations are preferred and uh, to cause anesthesia at pharynx larynx trachea and bronchial region the drugs like lidocaine at the dose of 2 to 4 percent and tetracaine at 1 to 2 percent they are uh, formulated in the form of sprays so if we have to cause anesthesia in the pharynx or throat region, then we have to uh, give these sprays and the anesthesia is caused. These are, uh, I mean, these are preferred in order to do endoscopies. And for esophagus and stomach, the drug oxytocine at the dose of 0.2% in the form of suspension is given. So this is the oral formulation where it is formulated in the form of suspension and it is used to, uh, it is used for the purpose of gastritis, esophagitis and if there is any heartburn, these are used. And for if there is any skin damage for the abraded skin, that is this, the skin which is not in touch or intact. So for that, we have to give tetracaine, benzocaine and butamben in the form of cream, ointment and dusting powder. For example, the skin surface or the deepest layer of the skin in order for the drug to reach that. So these formulations are preferred and uh, these are mostly used for the purpose of ulcers, burns and itching dermatosis. And for intact skin, which are directly in contact with the skin, the drugs like prolocaine at 5% is given in the form of cream under occlusion. So this, it is mostly given through cream and we can directly apply the cream on that particular area. And uh, this is also used for IV cannulation and skin surgery. So in order for the uh, for cannulation procedures and for skin surgeries, this prolocaine is preferred. And uh, for urethra, the drug lidocaine at the 2% in the form of jelly is preferred. So we have to apply the jelly and thereby it is uh, it is used for the dilatation of the ure urethra. And for anal canal and rectum region, the drugs like lidocaine 4%, dibucaine 1% and benzocaine 5% is given in the form of ointment, cream or suppositories. So suppositories are the formulations which are directly injected through the rectal root. And uh, these are uh, used for the purpose of if there are if the person is having piles or for for the surgery if for surgical procedures of anal or rectal region or to fissure or for the fissures these uh, local anesthesias are preferred. Spinal anesthesia. So spinal anesthesia is an anesthesia which is caused to the spinal region. So we are directly injecting the local anesthesia to the spinal cord and thereby it causes the anesthetic, anesthetic effect to the spinal region. So here what are the complications which are involved if the local anesthesia is given directly to the spinal cord or uh, spinal anesthesia is induced. So it may cause respiratory paralysis. It will paralyze the respiratory and thereby it causes difficulty in the breathing and it may cause hypotension where the blood pressure is decreased and it may cause severe headache and it may cause corda equina syndrome. So this is a condition where it is causing swelling or and it is increasing pressure at the nerve endings which are present in the spinal cord. So in the spinal region whatever the nerves are present to the nerve endings there occurs increased pressure and swelling in that position. 
particular area and it causes septic meningitis and uh, I mean to the meningeal region it may cause infection or sepsis and it may induce nausea and vomiting. So these are the complications which are involved in the spinal anesthesia. So proper care have to be taken if the spinal anesthesia is induced.